you're here for the new Mavic 3 Pro. Let's get it. What's up, y'all? Tight Shirt Terry Warfield, and I'm back for another video. Hope you're having a fantastic day so far. Remember to be thankful for your life today because you did not have to have that on with the meat potatoes. Yes, we have the Mavic 3 Pro right here. Yes, the leaks are real. I'm so hyped about this drone. There's not a whole lot that's changed from the original Mavic 3 except for this huge camera module right here. So that's what we're gonna hone in on in this video. So it's time to talk about the cameras because honestly, there's a lot of notable changes. Let's start with the main camera. It's still 24 millimeter, 20 megapixels with Hasselblad color. F2.8 to F11. You can shoot D-Log M, which is a new addition, HLG and standard color profile, 5.1K up to 50 frames per second, 4K and cinema 4K up to 120 frames per second, 1080p up to 200 frames per second. You can shoot H.264, H.265, and if you get the Cine model, you can shoot in ProRes. Just like the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic, the main sensor is incredible. Next, the star of the show here is the new medium tele camera. So one over one third inch, 70 millimeter, F2.8 fixed focal length at 12 megapixels or 48 megapixels in bend mode. It can shoot up to 4K 60 frames per second, up to 1080p 60 frames per second. D-Log M and HLG, H.264, H.265, and of course, ProRes if you get the Cine model. You get the same level of image quality you get out the Mini 3 Pro at a much longer focal length that lends to some amazingly creative shots. This camera is a great mix between the wide angle 24 millimeter and the telephoto 166 millimeter. You can still get great parallax with this lens and you still get full pro control. This in my opinion is the most welcome addition to the Mavic 3 Pro. And last but not least, the upgraded tele camera. It's a half inch 12 megapixel 166 millimeter lens with an aperture of f3.4. Just like the medium tele camera, it can shoot up to 4K 60, up to 1080p 60. However, there is no D-Log or HLG, so you fix the normal color only. It can shoot H.264, H.265, and of course, ProRes on Cine models, and you do get pro controls. With seemingly upgraded image quality over the original Mavic 3, this is by far the most creative lens out of the triple camera array. You get unmatched parallax opportunity and unique perspectives you just can't get on any other fixed lens drone. This drone has relit my fire to capture our world from above. So it is real good that all three cameras can pretty much be matched when it comes to ProRes and 4K60, but I just wish we could shoot D-Log on a 166 millimeter camera. I don't know why we can't, if it's a processing bottleneck, whatever the case may be, at least we got it on a 70 millimeter camera and that's really good. Okay, so let's go over all of the nerdy little nuance differences. And yes, I have my phone right here because if I miss something, y'all are gonna cook me in the comments. Y'all know how y'all love to do. But there are some differences when it comes to the Mavic 3 versus the Mavic 3 Pro. So first of all, there is a weight difference. The original Mavic 3 weighs 895 grams. The Mavic 3 Cine weighs 899 grams. The Mavic 3 Pro weighs 958 grams. And the Mavic 3 Pro Cine weighs 963 grams. You okay, Darkwing? Oh, that's what I that's what I named it, the, the, the Mavic 3 Darkwing. It's a little cheesy, but I like the name Darkwing, okay? There's also some flight time differences. So the Mavic 3 is rated at 46 minutes. The Mavic 3 Pro is rated at 43 minutes. And that's because it's got some extra heft to lug around when it comes to this big old gimbal and camera setup on the front. Now, obviously the Mavic 3 Pro comes with a bunch of options when it comes to which kits you wanna pick. You can go on DJI's website, cause there's like 40,000 of them. But in short, you can get fly more combos with the standard RC controller 
or the RC Pro. Plus, remember, there is a Cine version also. So let's talk about that real quick. A lot of us thought that the new Pro version was gonna automatically come with one terabyte of storage and the ability to shoot ProRes. Well, unfortunately, that did not happen. So it's still split from Pro to Cine. Only the Cine comes with the one terabyte of storage and ProRes options. All right, I got the Mavic 3 Pro ND filters. These come in the Fly More combo. I love the way these look, I ain't gonna lie. And they do have some different color shades and stuff to them. Some of y'all might wonder like, why are they different color shades? And that's because different NDs, when it comes to strength, might produce a different color cast. So that's why you see that on here. The way you put these on here is you turn it counterclockwise, uh, you take the cover off the Mavic 3 Pro, and then you snap these right into place. So it's just like the Mavic 3 and the Mavic 3 Classic. My only gripe with these ND filters is, first of all, let me tell you which ones come in here. So there's an ND8, uh, ND32, ND64, and the ND16. I read those completely out of order. However, my thing with the Mavic 3 in general, right, the main camera has an adjustable aperture. So it's f2.8 to f11. So with the main camera, I don't necessarily need to slap an ND filter on there if I need to cut out some light because I could just stop down. But the second camera is 70 millimeters at f2.8 and the third camera is 166 millimeters at f3.4. The problem comes where when I wanna put an ND on just those, now I have to ND my main camera because it's all one unit. All right, I know I complained about the ND filters, but let's be real, you gotta work around it. So here's the solution. You gotta pick which lens you wanna shoot with when, before you press record, right? So if you know you're about to use the 70 millimeter lens, then pick the appropriate ND filter for the 70 millimeter for the shot that you're about to get. And if you wanna go back to the main one, then you switch to another ND that uh, you know is more appropriate for the main and you get where I'm going with this. So the easiest way to combat the, the quote unquote problem is just to use the correct ND for the shot that you're trying to get. All right, so the dope thing about the 70 millimeter lens is active track works on it. So right now I'm tracking a small boat going through the canal and it's working without a hitch. All right, so I really wanted to know if night mode would work on the 3X or 7X cameras. And unfortunately it doesn't. So even if you try, like I was thinking like, let's go to normal and then see if we can switch it to the 7X camera or let's try 3X. So 3X, and by the way, this is pre-production firmware, so it's a little slow sometimes. But uh, then now that we're on a 3X camera, if we hit this and try night mode, it goes back to the 24 millimeter camera. So night mode on the 3X and 7X cameras is not supported. But while we're here, you still got your explore tab. You still got master shots, quick shots, hyperlapse, pano. It's got cruise control, waypoints. Uh, it's really turning into a pro drone uh, because these additional two cameras and the variation of shots it allows you to get does allow you to like tell stories on a whole different level using footage versus only having you know 24 millimeter or 160 plus millimeter like having that 70 millimeter in between is fire and the cameras are in my opinion especially for the 70 millimeter cameras really good and from my eyes it looks like the 7X camera is also a lot better. I know a lot of people are gonna be concerned with, you know, with the bigger cameras, it's gonna be like a whole lot slower, man. This thing still rips across the sky. Like it's still very fast to agile. I don't think you're gonna notice the difference. Like it, it might be a hair or a tad slower or less nimble, but like this thing rips, especially in sport mode, wham. It's out of here. All right, is the Mavic 3 Pro a Pro Mavic 3 now? As if the original Mavic 3 couldn't be used in the Pro environment, but neither here nor there. I think these changes 
are welcome changes. First of all, we still getting the amazing main camera. The 3X camera is actually really, really good with that Mini 3 Pro sensor in there. The fact that you can still use D-Log and Active Track and all that stuff on the 3X camera is fantastic. The 7X camera is improved. It's got a faster aperture. It's a little bit longer when it comes to focal length. And you can shoot ProRes and 4K 60 out of all three lenses. So does that mean that you should ditch your Mavic 3 and run out and go buy this one? That is up to you and I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I don't know what your pockets look like. But overall, I know some of y'all are going to be mad about this update. And also, there's going to be some people who are really excited about the update. I'm more on the excited side. Don't you cut my neck off, okay? I'm more on the excited side, but I'm very curious to know what y'all think. Big shout out to DJI for sending this drone over early for me to test out. And until um, next time, I'm out of here. So, Tyson Terry Warfield, piece of chicken grease, I'm out of here. Bye.